There is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious for men, Cine. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Wives are contained within it. An awareness creeps up on you. A mass lies hidden in your dead angle, soaking in some lurid acidic source. It's bloated and shameful. A ball of meat surrounding you. This is a terrible line of questioning, and it will only lead to more awareness of the meat. There. No ball of meat. No light in the formless nothing. Just nice women. Coming right up, sir. Smooth passage. Do you really? All right. Nothing town to fuck all, Borough. Great choice, Elder One. It has always been like this, and it always will. The song of death is sweet and endless. But what is this? Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meet around you. A sensation. Like a fly to the ointment, your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert, hurting, longing, dancing to disco music. You can take it. You're a champion. The stench of liquor rises from your mouth. And with it, an ungodly headache. The fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound. A clarion call from hell. You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare-cut pants. It says, whirling in rags, on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. 
it should open the door. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. The morning light hurts your eyes. It's hazy, but you see the ocean and some war-torn buildings. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. Something you've done before. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. The single green shoe you found fits the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have also been heavy enough if thrown with force. Congratulations. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you could still find the other one on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. A cool wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. Or has it been consigned there as punishment? You feel as though this creature is your friend and wants to reattach itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures together in this strange world. The blades come squeaking to a halt. It should be easier to reach the tie now. You swoop up and catch the tie. Snap. It's released from the blade. Warning, warning. The necktie is no longer contained. What you have in your hand is a fantastically colorful tie with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. The switch must be broken because nothing happens. The air in the room is starting to feel like vaporized urine. A terrible mistake. Turn the lights off immediately. You can practically feel the photons burning a hole in your brain. It's just a little hangover induced photosensitivity. Don't overreact. Little black spots dance on your retinas. It's almost pleasurable. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. Really, all recollection of the person you are the people in your life and even the world you're in has drowned in a sea of blood alcohol. This was no mere night of drinking. It was a deluge of world-ending proportions. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there. And you will never unbecome it. Yeah, 
there is definitely something wrong with it. Where to even begin? There is the bloatedness, then the swollenness. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. Bet you are. Your nose feels like a small balloon in the middle of your face. It hurts when you honk it. It doesn't appear to be a particularly tiny nose either. Not with all the drinks it's absorbed for you. It's not. It's swollen and snail-like, wriggling between your fingers. Behold. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? Whatever it is, at least it's dead now. There's clearly rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. Oh my God, you can't stop. It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? You are correct. There they both are, two identical shoes, both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin, reunited on your feet. Good, they're balanced, comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Uh, no. There's only one solution to this. You're a businessman. Because you're a police officer, sir. I'm not, unless you've been shitting us all this time. You've been here for three days, on official police business, no less. Couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. Don't be so harsh on yourself. They let almost anyone be a police officer. A glib remark. Don't let it stand. Assert yourself. 
a fondness for contradictory statements. Extraordinary. Could it be because of the drinking? The words have already left your mouth. <laughs> what was that? That's not even how words are used. What did you say? Come on, say it again. Come on, man. Freddy, please. One more. Don't back down now. Say what you said again, proudly. <laughs> Goddamn right you did. You crazy asshole, you. What kind of cop are you? Has the time come already? You're one intense cup. Anyone ever tell you that? All right, then. Looks like I should go and prepare for what's to come. And thank you. This has been delightful. I do hope it happens sooner. Otherwise... It's gonna suck for you later when you have to interrogate me. And for the record, no, I didn't do it. You should pick that fat, juicy cigarette butt from the tray, light it up, and smoke the living shit out of it. Who knows what you are? A monster, a murderer, the gnome of Jeroma? You feel like a smoker, especially when you look at that juicy, succulent, seductive cigarette stub, still smoldering deliciously. How very astute of you. This renders it ineffectual. You should look for a whole cigarette, or better yet, an entire pack. Strike that. A carton. Make sure they're all healthy and able-bodied. Then smoke them all. The idea seems to make your neck expand. Suddenly, the garish tie feels very snug. Or you could not do that. No one is making you. Good. They'll make you stronger and better. You're too old to be cool now. But find cigarettes. Smoke them. Blam. Instantly a cool renegade man. A mystical red dragon with smoke rising from his nostrils. Plus, smoking them gives massive bonuses. You should totally sing karaoke here, the first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know your vast oceanic soul. Utterly. And it needs to be heard. Through a PA system. 
by other people, whether they like it or not. Ram it up their ears, says your adrenaline gland. Violently express yourself. You have not yet stumbled on the right lamentation, but it's out there. It'll come to you. You will wreak havoc with it. Don't worry. Serves them right. Wipe that smirk off their face with your sad, tragic song. Who's laughing now? No one. You have to find something tragic to sing first, though. A man in his late twenties stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. That was disdain in his eyes. Even now he's purposely ignoring you. A competent work of taxidermy, the white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs, one of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it, most likely on a wall. Something about it makes you feel bitter. Look, your buddy is over there. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. A spectacled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. If an assault were launched on this building right now, if the windows came crashing down and the whole world descended upon you, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. You are sure of this, but why? He is your half-brother. Hello, I'm Kim Kilsoragi, Lieutenant, Precinct 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize he's waiting for your name. This is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. Get creative. Conceptualize. Raphael Ambrosius Gusto. You instinctively run your hand over the multi-patterned silk of your tie. Don't worry, Raphael Ambrosius Casto is one classy name for one classy cop. Yes, well... It looks like we had a little skidding error on Sunday. Saturday too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? Then we should ask him for a rundown of the area. Get me up to speed. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? Okay, we'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? So, the body is still in the tree. This is the first time you detect a weariness in the lieutenant's voice. It is obvious he would have preferred for the body to no longer be in the tree. Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. I can see you drank last night and the night before, and that you are still drunk now. But I have seen officers go through worse. Much worse. If you need something for your headache, there is a general store nearby. But as I said, the dead body should be our number one concern. A painkiller would be good about now. This thing is pulsating with discomfort. The best cure for a headache is, of course, morphine. They won't have that. So cigarettes will have to do. After you, officer. If you're about to embark on an investigation, shouldn't you... You mean you don't have a badge? Losing your identification card is a serious matter. 
My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I advise you to try to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is now in your party. You can talk to him whenever by interacting with him.